Do you want to introduce yourself, just in case like people don't know who you are? Uh, my name is Brandon Harding. <laughs> Brandon Good Harding. Hope you're having a great day. <laughs> right. What's going on guys? Brandon Harden here. Hope you're having a great day. It is the 29th of February. Today is a Thursday and I thought today we'd react to some of my most sort of like interesting or controversial comments over the past bunch of videos. I literally always read your comments so the comments you do drop I massively appreciate but some I like to save to actually answer in videos which is exactly what we're going to be doing today. As of today we are almost 15 weeks out from the show so we've been on prep now for five weeks in total. We literally added Clen in this morning so obviously the morning jitters are about to begin and everything's really about to start moving because everything we have lost so far on this prep we've dropped 10 pounds so far literally just on a little bit of cardio and the diet so things have been moving relatively quick but things are about to move a lot faster implementing that we've upped cardio by a fat five minutes so we're doing 25 minutes fasted every single morning now we're not increasing things too drastically we don't need to be doing half an hour 40 minutes just yet things are going to start moving now which i'm really really excited to see the changes in my physique from last year i haven't really done like a sit down talking video in quite a while because i feel like my vlogs are very like generalized over the course of my whole day so i feel like it'd be nice to just like sit down midday just have a chat with you guys and catch up and just see what's going on and react to some questions i've prepared and screenshotted a bunch so they're ready on my phone i'm going to reel them off right now and give the best answer that i can to the comments what shows are you doing so the first show is the toronto pro show that is on june 9th my girlfriend's going to be competing the day before in the amateur show trying to get a pro card and I'll be doing the pro show my first ever pro show pro debut on the 9th of June then don't quote me if I'm wrong like I'm pretty sure I've got like a generalized good idea of like what shows are when but one week later we're going to be flying to Spain doing the Alicante pro then two weeks after that my parents actually have a place in Portugal so I'm probably going to be going to Portugal directly after Alicante because there is a Portugal pro show two weeks after Alicante because I've been to Portugal so many times like I literally grew up there in the summer we spent so much of like summer holidays from school in Portugal so I know the Algarve I know the general area so it's gonna be really really like easy and comfortable for me to do a show while in Portugal and then there's a three-week gap we're gonna be coming all the way back to Canada but not where we are right now because where we're based right now is Ontario but the complete other side on the west there's a Vancouver show which is like the Vancouver Pro and that'll be the final show of the season of course unless we win one of them then we'll essentially go to the Olympia which will then be you know in America those are the four shows we're gonna be doing this season next favorite person you have ever trained with by the way i've like written these out like a bit neater than they was on youtube because obviously like people comment sometimes and they're just like it's kind of random <laughs> but the favorite person i've ever trained with i would have to say it was sebum do you want to introduce yourself just in case like people don't know who you are uh, my name is brandon harding <laughs> brandon Good harding you guys. hope you're having a great day <laughs> here in my home country of canada you guys say i'm visiting him but i think we should say he's visiting me like i've had the pleasure to train with a bunch of incredible people over the years but i think chris bum said was the best person because the reason it was the best wasn't because it was the best workout in general like we didn't push each other the most it was so surprising to me that someone that had won the olympia at that time was so genuine calm down to earth and it honestly just gave me such a big perspective on why the hell anyone has an ego in the industry like there are some people in the gym that have an ego or have never achieved anything they still have an ego they have this like like resting bitch face in the gym and i don't understand that because if someone that is up there as much as him and having won the olympia can be so cool calm and collected and just a genuinely nice person. These are the headphones you want on breath. Love the headphones you want on breath. <laughs> All right, so these, are, are, these are the Mr. Olympia classic headphones right now. No one, in my opinion, deserves to have an ego. If he can be the way he is, then I feel like anyone can. So ego is always going to be a thing that's really, really important to me in terms of keeping it calm and just never letting things. If I ever went to Olympia, I'm not going to turn into a dickhead. I mean, I, I, I would like to believe I was the same ever since getting the pro card. Nothing in my life has changed. That was my favorite workout because one, I actually hit my bench PR of 100 and 80 kilograms at that time like literally with him it was one of the best fucking feelings in my life and just generally it was just a great time so i would have to say it was sebum next what happened to the hard buddy app my subscription cancelled so i made the decision because as you know i was working on the hard body app for about a year and it was meant to be something that was a one-stop shop for anybody that wanted a plan for any sort of goal i 
tried so hard to make it the best app that it could possibly be. And it did very well. Like, don't get me wrong, I didn't delete it because it was a flop. Like it did financially, fantastic. Like I was very, very pleased with how things were going. But in my heart, I couldn't grasp that I couldn't see everyone and their progression. And if it was really helping people. Like I didn't want to have something just made like so many other influencers out there that have these apps or they like promote coaching, but it's not really them. It's either like Lennus or Macroactive or one of these like services that like basically present a platform. But I've been reached out to these people so many times and I've purposely said no because I don't want to be one of these piece of shit people on social media that say like, sign up for my online coaching. It's not really you. It's a it's an AI that's building you a custom plan. You're not being built that by the person you're following. It's literally some computer generating you a program so you think you're being coached by this person that you really want to get advice from, but it's not them. So I've always said no to that sort of thing. And the app was very similar to obviously like not understanding or being able to control someone's progress it was like hey here are some plans that I've built and I'm really really proud of it like don't get me wrong like the meals that I created everything was incredible like it genuinely would help a lot of people people following something that costs like 10 pound a month when someone pays a higher amount something they are more likely to apply themselves to it because they're not going to invest in themselves highly if they're just going to waste their money so, like people do things that they pay a lot for like a subscription you're going to drive a car you pay a lot for you're going to go to the gym if you pay a really expensive membership like you're just going to apply yourself more there was just something about it that didn't feel right to me like I made the money it was great I hopefully helped a lot of people but genuinely in my heart like I, I've always wanted to offer something that isn't some like <laughs> BS like oh I'm now an online coach and it's not really me coaching it's some other person coaching like I've never wanted to do that so I'm trying to figure out a way in the future where I can create something to offer a service to a very select few people to genuinely put my heart and soul into transforming their physique and into transforming their life like you know not an app so I removed it from the app store. You can no longer subscribe to the Hard Body app. It's not a thing. I literally deleted it because I want to do something better in the future. Yeah, just in my heart, I didn't feel right. So what happened to the BMW, bro? The BMW is currently sitting on my driveway at my dad's because I'm actually selling it. It's listed on Auto Trader. It's being sold for like 10K. I literally bought it for like 13. It's an incredible car. It's literally like obviously waiting for me. I can drive it when I go home. If I do go back to the UK, it'll actually be cheaper to rent a car than to insure that car. It defines a moment in my life where I was so proud and happy to be able to afford the car at that time. And I, I feel like the only reason I'm holding on to it right now is memorabilia as like defining a moment that I was super proud of. If I wanted to insure the BMW for one weekend, it would cost like 500 to 800 pound because short-term insurance policies are so expensive. But to rent a car, I could get that for like 200 pound for the weekend. Make it make sense. These titles are so cringe. <sighs> I've been receiving comments like, this is so clickbait. Why do you still clickbait? Why do you do this? And like, honestly, I don't really think I clickbait my videos that much. Like I wouldn't, I'm not gonna create an entire YouTube video and call it something that's terrible and call it something that I don't think people are gonna click on. And by the way, I have tested in the past with like YouTube video performance, calling the video exactly what it is. And it flops, like it just doesn't do well. And then there's the other side where you clickbait too much and it just annoys people. So I've always found that with my videos, I try and find like a nice middle ground where it's generally really interesting it talks about what is in the video but it's not too clickbait but it's interesting so if you are in a position that you're offended by my titles or you think it's cringy clickbait i'm sorry bro would you spend years of your life writing a book and then calling it something shit that no one's gonna read are you still being coached by callum yes i'm still coached by callum i'm still part of team pro coach i don't really see me leaving callum honestly like i really enjoy him as a person he's a great guy he's always looked after me he works well with my lifestyle he's on my back as much as he needs to be like obviously your coach is there to like give you the advice but he's not there to chase you Sometimes I need chasing. Sometimes I'm just so busy and he really, really like accommodates that and he really, really helps me with things that I need and stuff. And like, he's just generally a really good person. I've learned from every conversation we've had and I've been with him now for like just over three and a half years or about three years at this point. He helped me get my pro card and I think it would be wrong of me to leave. If I told him one day that I wanted to step it up and take a bunch of gear and really, really go crazy with it and try and just absolutely morph into a freak, he'd be there to guide me through that. But I feel like he also has my best interest at heart in a health perspective too. So he's never gonna make me do anything crazy like that. So yeah, I got a lot of respect for the guy. I'm gonna be staying with Callum probably for the you know entirety of my bodybuilding thing. This guy always says he's gonna step on stage but never does. I was on stage a year and a half ago. Like how, 
short do you want my off season to be? Like you literally have to dedicate time to grow. Like I can't just like have a, a six month off season and then compete again, like just to keep you engaged. Like I have to grow. There has to be a position in where, where my physique doesn't look admirable. I've got excess body fat. The videos aren't gonna be as interesting because I'm not getting shredded. Like obviously now it's very different because it, it, we're on like a, a short journey for like a four to five month period where every video I'm gonna look better and better and better and then present it over a six week period of competing. So don't worry, we're gonna finish. I'm gonna do our best to make it the best prep ever. I'm gonna move right now into the bedroom where it's a bit more light. It's getting dark right here. I feel like I'm edging closer to the window, but I'm gonna go where it's a bit more light. All right, here we go. In the bedroom, the sun's setting right in front of me. It's very scenic right now, I'm enjoying the view. Do you think about all the times people said you would never turn pro? Honestly, no. All the people that said like something good that was my goal would never happen. Like I know those sort of people, like they're either really miserable in their own life or they just genuinely didn't see how passionate I was about this goal because I'm a YouTube bodybuilder. Essentially, like there's always been a stigma. I took social media more seriously than bodybuilding itself. I didn't vlog every day. I didn't like record every single workout. Like people don't see the endless hours that you spend in the kitchen, prepping your meals, eating your food, training when the camera's not around, all those things. So I don't think about that stuff really at all because I knew in my heart how important this one thing was to me. And all I had to do over a period of time was to apply myself every year until it happened. And it did. And it was always going to happen. I was never not going to turn into a pro. I would never leave this existence on this planet without achieving the thing that I wanted to achieve. And that's the mentality that you have to have with every goal you set for yourself. Like you need to convince yourself, I'm not going to stop until it happens. I'm never gonna quit. I'm never gonna give up because if you give up, you may as well not even start because if you have it within you to stop and give up, you're wasting your time. You should actually apply yourself to something that you believe you have the bandwidth to finish. Otherwise, leave it to someone else because there's someone else out there that wants to achieve it more than you. And guess what? They're gonna do it because they want it more than you. Fuck what everyone else says. It doesn't matter. The only thing that really matters is how much you want something. And that was the mentality that I had over the entire time. I thought this was a nice comment. This is easily your best physique hyped for the pro debut, bro. Thank you. Next, what's your opinion on Sam Sulek taking over the industry? I think he was one of the best things for the industry. Amongst the sea of people that are absolutely just full of shit, there was this one guy that loved lifting, was genuine, was honest, had a passion, has very good morals, and just genuinely is a really good person. Come on social media, express what true consistency really means with daily uploads. Because you tell people all the time, like, how do you grow on social media? What should you do to grow? Like, you, you need to do something if you're gonna do it every single day. There was no one other than like Greg Doucette and a few other people that were literally posting daily vlogs in fitness and he came along and he did exactly that he filled a gap in a market because no one was really making daily vlogs in fitness because at the same time that he blew up everyone was watching podcasts and people were really enjoying the whole podcast scene and his videos mic'd up him sat in the car in the gym and then back in his car they're very podcast-esque there's so much fluff now in the industry that someone that goes back to the basics and is a genuinely nice person to watch that put a whole different spin on macros and his belief which was the slight little essence of controversy that I've feel like helped bring his name out there. Basically talking about you can achieve the same physique if the macro breakdown of like whole food and like donuts is the same, you'll achieve the same thing. Like relative to what the industry needed, I believe there was a place for him and he has run with it. And I love seeing a guy that's so genuine and nice succeed in such a great way. I'd love to see more of what he's gonna do in the future. Do you think women's classic physique <laughs> will ever become a thing after men's wellness? I don't know if you saw it, but on Instagram, there was a competitor, I don't know where, but there was a federation that created the class women's or like men's wellness which is where men that had transitioned into being a woman could compete in wellness because obviously wellness is like a world-renowned category but it's women only men competing in a women's category is seen to be very controversial based on the fact that men generally have the capacity to build more muscle which makes things a little bit unfair for the women competitors so they made an entire class for men's wellness where men that are women can compete against each other I don't really feel that great about it <laughs> uh -uh. the the world is changing in such a weird way right in front of our eyes. It's so hard to keep up with it. And not from the perspective of like, you know, what's cool and what's not, because that always happened. You know, through generations, things were cool and things weren't cool. There was new people that would filter through the industry. There's always a new face to follow and technologies further improving, AI's taken over the world. Those things are easy to see and manage and keep on top of. But in regards to people's like, this whole gender thing, classes accommodating for the 1% or the 0.01% just to keep people 
people happy and to stop like a protest or an outroar like the generation that we're living in is becoming very easily bendable and very weak and very like hard to stick to their perspectives and mindsets for the true nature of what they believe to be how things should be because they're scared of receiving bad publicity and the company or federation or whatever not succeeding because of a bad move you know it's weird isn't it i don't know how to react but that's my standpoint on it like it's weird i don't like the way the world's going but i understand why federations and things are bending but i don't agree with it so do i think there'll be a women's classic physique i hope not there's already women's physique which is great so but seeing a bunch of men that are now women compete in classic trunks i don't know there'll be like a woman's men's sebum I literally have one more left. I want to keep this brief. I didn't want to make this video like 30 minutes long. But the last one was, what are your current plans with Hardbody? Something like been seeing a lot on Instagram recently. And the plan for the brand currently is we've been around for about three years. And the goal for the next three years is a complete company flip in terms of the way things have been done in the past, which was with a third party service. They helped with a lot of things in terms of like, I created the products, decided the materials, decided the packaging, the branding, the social media, the people we brought on, everything. The only thing that the third party service provided was website development and a shipping service. Now they're gone. Now Hardbody is completely in the hands of the team that run it, which is myself, Stu, a lovely girl in America called Krista, a fantastic guy in the UK called Jordan who owns the fulfillment center that we currently use. So currently there are a team of four people behind the scenes that we've also got someone on social media too. So I'd, I'd say there's five. And the goal for the future, evolving as we go, bringing on more people to the team. We now have a little bit more of a budget in regards to like what we can do and where we can put it in regards to developing new products we've got about 40 to 45 products currently being developed across equipment and clothing so there is a lot happening there's a lot of like restocks dropping new products dropping literally within the next three weeks three to four weeks i think there's something happening on the 7th the 14th and the 21st of march so make sure to follow the hardbody instagram for that or just like my stories and i'll be sharing like little bits here and there we did just make an improvement we added free shipping all orders above 150 pound and 200 that's globally we're now offering a 30 day money back guarantee so no matter what you get, if you don't like it, you can return it, you'll get your money back and you can ship it back obviously to us and we can either replace the item or just you can just return it completely. We've just reweighed every single product. So now everything is around 100 to 200 grams lower than it was, which means you may apply for a cheaper shipping rate. In shipping services, there's a threshold of 2000 grams. So as soon as you hit the two kilo mark, it becomes more expensive. But now you have to buy like five or six products to even hit that threshold. So now everyone globally is gonna be receiving amazing shipping rates. So two day shipping to the UK and five day shipping to US and Canada. So it literally can't get better than it is right now. We've improved so much and we'll continue to do so hopefully every year. But that's the sort of standpoint where we're at, what we're developing, what the goal is, little things that we're refining. And I couldn't be more proud of what my little baby is turning into. It's amazing to see. I've still been on the back of being ill too. I feel like I've got crusty lips and I've been sniffling and my voice sounds a little bit weird. I was really ill for two days. I think I spoke about it in the last video, but it's still like lingering. I'm waiting for it to go we've still been hitting workouts we've still been doing cardio and following the diets nothing's wavered on that front but it's just been a little bit harder than it should have been but nevertheless we're doing our thing and we're making the most of it so if you enjoyed the video please drop a like turn on post notifications subscribe if you haven't already because it really helps the channel grow and i will see you in episode six of hard body shredding peace